Hello, everybody, and welcome to Development Thoughts number 17 for Risk of Rain 2. Now, this is kind of going to be a two-part video. First part, obviously, I'm going to read Development Thoughts number 17 and tell you exactly what the changes are. And number two, I just wanted to kind of talk about the 1.0 update as a whole and discuss the criticisms that are coming its way. So first and foremost, they have already released a hot fix patch. This is currently live. If you go on Steam, it will update the game. It's like a 600 kilobyte update, insanely small. And as far as I know, there were only two changes on that update. First and foremost, the software. Lock Island is no longer soft lock. I tested this on stream plenty of times. I jumped off. It teleported me right back on the bridge as it should. So everything's good to go. And second of all, the infinite loop with the forgive me, please. And the soul bond catalyst, the forgive me, please is the equipment that procs your on kill effects. And the soul bond catalyst is an item that gives you an on kill effect that reduces your equipment cooldown. You can kind of see the issue there. So that has also been fixed. There are also three other things that were not in the hot fix, but are being addressed. Number one, the server browser has some issues and they're fixing them. The loaders utility and the mercenaries utility are being behaving a bit different than before. I haven't played the loader on the patch, but I have played mercenary and I agree the blinding assault just kind of feels weird. It's something to do with the hit pause. You know, when you zoom through a ton of enemies and it kind of like uh, 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 staggers you through them, it just feels a bit off. And then finally the scrap and lunar cauldron interaction. If you have not seen this or used it yourself, essentially, let's say you have a hopu feather they don't want. I don't know why you wouldn't want it, but let's say you scrap a hopu feather. You have one green scrap and you have four additional greens, just random green items. You go into the lunar portal, you see the red item. It's an interstellar dust plant. You say, woo! You go in to trade for it, and your one green scrap plus four green items, you would think it just takes all of those, gives the desk plant, right? No. It takes that one green scrap and turns it into five green scrap. Just magically out of nowhere, poof, five green scrap out of one. All four of your green items are completely safe. It just turns that one scrap into a free red item. And this works with any number. You could have two green scrap. It would take both of your scrap, turn them into five, and give you an item. So kind of a bad interaction. Obviously, it's going to be fixed in the future. Moving on here are the things that they are keeping an eye on, not necessarily things they are going to address just the things they have noticed and are considering addressing and we're going to get into some last boss spoilers here so i'll put up a timestamp here you can go to that point in the video and avoid all the spoilers in three two one they start by saying they are really happy with the final boss i wholeheartedly agree i think it is a very good fight but some players are feeling frustrated with the last phase now, I was one of these players, at least on the first day, but after I played a little bit more on the update and I learned the mechanics, it's actually not that bad once you get used to it. And their intent for the phase was to be an oh crap moment, which it is, and then have some edge cases for unique inter item actions, which it does. But the intent was not for players to avoid good items, destroy their build, or feel bad about picking up powerful items. And what they're saying here with avoiding the good items, I have the perfect example. The second time I fought the boss, I had a Tesla coil in my inventory. I had already seen the entire boss fight. I knew what to expect. And I was like, huh, if I give him this Tesla coil, he's probably going to kill me instantly on phase three. Sure enough, I scrapped the Tesla coil so he couldn't get it. And that's what they're saying here. They do not want you to do that. If it seems to be the best strategy, they will be changing the last phase appropriately. I think that's fair. But honestly, I don't have a problem with the final phase being difficult because, you know, it's the final boss of the entire game. If you kill the boss, you beat the game, quote unquote. So it should be pretty hard. Moving on here, mercenary players feel the base stats were hit a bit too harsh. I agree with this to a certain extent. And the reason I say that is illustrated perfectly by Hopu's next sentence. We want to give the community time to learn the changes and potentially change item priorities. I feel like this point illustrates the criticism of the update as a whole perfectly. The update's been out for, what, three days at this point? And some of the criticism is just reaming the game for changing it up too much. The whole update was supposedly about player agency, and a lot of people feel that their player agency was reduced and in some cases removed entirely. Again, I will address this more at the end of the video. So they're keeping an eye on the mercenary changes and the overall balance of the game in general. Here's a pretty good point here. The players wish for more skill variants and lore entries and felt bamboozled when they weren't there for 1.0, essentially all those little yellow wrenches that were there are no longer there and the skills weren't actually added so people rightly feel like oh they took them out without telling us that's kind of cheap i think at the very least they should have just added one line in the past note saying hey the wrenches that were there are no longer there but and then explained why they aren't there such as they're just delaying them for a future update which they very well may be and finally people want to know what's happening after 1.0 as i said leading up to this patch this is not the final update for risk of rain 2 and they will be supporting it after 1.0 and they have some big blog post to share once they're ready which is huge some big blog posts now to talk a little bit about 1.0 in general if you've seen any kind of feedback on discord reddit the steam reviews themselves you would see some pretty negative stuff some of it is justified completely other stuff i feel like it's not justified at all the things that are warranted are obviously like the bugs soft lock island should not have been a thing on release period removing all of the placeholder wrench icons and then not explaining it at all is also justified however by saying hopu sabotaged the update and 
and didn't deliver on their promises by not including every single little wrench and making it into a reality that is not fair at all and to hit on some bigger points with the update i want to pull from this reddit post this is on the risk of rain 2 subreddit i'll leave a link down in the description below i highly recommend you read this entire post and hold on before you roll your eyes and say oh look at him pulling a reddit post just a toxic cesspool of echo chambers blah 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 no i pulled this post specifically because it kind of groups together all of the criticisms that i have seen on again discord the steam reviews other reddit posts it kind of encapsulates everything so that's why i'm using this post specifically and let me make it clear here i am not attacking the author of this post at all i just want to talk about what they're saying in the post itself and i'm not going to read this whole thing again the link is below if you want to read the entire thing in fact i'm just going to talk about the conclusion here and specifically with this line here it feels like as of this patch our agency has been taken away characters have had their kits changed and forced to play in new ways you've dictated which is the opposite of agency you being the developers hopu the final boss takes away your build which is the opposite of agency the extremely low time to death of characters forcing building and playing specific ways like one shot protection is the opposite of agency the new character captain can't use large chunks of his kit for most of the game which is an agency in short this patch has wound up feeling more like taking away freedom and build diversity rather than giving it and if you remember the whole focus of this update was player agency according to hopu themselves and the development thoughts we all would have preferred you spend more time making this fun making the final level fun blah 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 final boss work all this stuff so essentially what they're saying is the player agency was not actually delivered and i disagree with that i think the scrapper is the perfect example of player agency done right where the mercenary changes a little bit too harsh yes i agree with that the captain not being able to use half of his kit in the bulwarks ambry or the void realms i also agree with that lore should never get in the way of fun but i strongly disagree with the premise of player agency was not addressed in this pack or even that it was taken away as they say right here again i highly recommend you go and read every single one of his points in detail but i just want to sum it all up here by saying just because the game is different or even harder specifically does not mean that hopu failed at delivering you more player agency more ways to control your run again criticism on the update as a whole is definitely warranted and yeah some of the balance changes are a bit iffy in my opinion specifically mercenary and acrid but at the end of the day just because things are now different different does not equate to hopu not delivering on what they said they would in fact if you go back and look at the very first iteration of the roadmap way back before scorched acres it's always said final boss final stage new items and equipment new survivor and guess what we got every single one of those things on the roadmap i summed all of this up a little better on my stream earlier today at twitch.tv slash so i'll throw out those clips now at the end of the video just to conclude everything thank you for watching and guys i am really enjoying the 1.0 update be on the lookout for tons of content coming in hot love the update so far i don't understand all the hate towards it yeah there's a few bugs yeah they were unfortunate but the whole player agency crap and people complaining that oh, you shouldn't like the update the player agency they lied to us i don't get it dude i love this update the, it, it feels refreshing it honestly feels so refreshing that 10 percent difficulty scaling makes so much of a difference to me i can't overstate that it's just way more combat and i love it it's everything that I want. I kind of get the the whole they removed the alternate abilities of the survivors, the, the the wrench icons. They just took them out and didn't talk about it. If they had addressed it, it would have been a lot better. But honestly, they never said that those things were guaranteed, right? They never said, oh, every single wrench icon that you see will be actually implemented with the 1.0 release. They're probably they might even still be working on this stuff. Maybe they tried to get it in a working state and they couldn't, so they delayed it until the next content update because they have confirmed that they are planning on adding more content after 1.0. You know? Like, who knows? But people are saying, oh, they lied to us. They took it out without telling us. No, they didn't. But this is made for the price of the game. It gives way more than realized. Yeah. So that's one thing that um, that I don't think is being mentioned a lot. Like, this game felt like a full game when it first came out. Did anyone buy this game uh, with its first content update, either with the actual update itself or before the update? Any day one players? Like, dude, this game felt complete. It felt like a solid product already at the start of early access and it just has gotten even better.